Well, my name is Tamarack Song and I live in the north woods of Wisconsin, um, surrounded by the Nicolay National Forest. I've been teaching wilderness skills for 40 years. And along with that, I've been learning about therapeutic breath work. First of all, from the native elders I was with, they taught me what tree hugging is all about, about breathing with trees and breathing with the earth. And I, I lived with a pack of uh, captive wolves for four years and I watched them breathe because breath was such a vital part of how they interacted with their environment. And I, I learned a few basic breath work techniques from them. And more recently, I studied with Jim Morningstar and Steve Moe. I learned more of the human applications of therapeutic breath work, which is very helpful to me. Also, as a child, I was a, a swimmer and a diver, and I learned about breath work techniques for training, for diving, for holding breath for long periods of, of time underwater. And now, I, as the founder of the Healing Nature Center, I use therapeutic breathing techniques in a, in a natural setting where the breath of life is infused with negative ions from the from moving water and natural aromatherapy from the from the elder trees, uh, I incorporate that in my in my breathwork practice. That is wonderful. What an extensive resume of learning breathwork from many different sources. What are the things that make you passionate about being a teacher and bringing this to other, sharing these skills that you've learned with? students and clients. Wow, that has a lot to do with my own trauma history, my, my childhood traumatization from a, a very dysfunctional family. And what I've learned through my own trauma recovery and the, the research I've done on trauma and what I see that I am able to bring forward, what I'm able to, to share with others in terms of how nature has been not only my refuge, but nature has been my therapist, you might say, and how breath and nature work so intrinsically together. I want to bring this forward to help other people to be able to avail themselves of the healing power of nature as well and nature's breath. You have a unique combination of skills and background. And what do you think students get particularly from the way you teach? What are the benefits or the gifts you think that are derived from all of your unique background that you impart to students? Well, part of that is what I've learned about being a facilitator, and that is essentially setting up scenarios and then getting out of the way so that the healing energy of nature, the, the healing touch of, of our mother can come forward and do her work. So I very much enjoy being a, a guide, a facilitator, a, a predecessor, you might say, to someone who's coming and walking in my footsteps. And if I can lead or guide someone to the point where Mother Nature is ready to take over, then I can step aside and just be a benevolent presence. That feels really good to me. It's very personally rewarding. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, what welcoming message would you give to people who are interested in learning breath work or learning some of the breathing skills that you've learned? How would you invite them in? Well, I, I really look forward to sharing nature's healing breath with you. In a real sense, your healing is my healing because we are sharing the same living breath. We have the same history. We have the same trauma history. And I welcome the opportunity to serve you on your healing journey. Mm, that's beautiful. I know that you are also one of the six teachers that are doing our newly formed Therapeutic Breathwork Community Continuing Education Series. And what is your topic in that series, Tamarack? My topic is taming the dragon. My topic is using, using the traditional shamanic techniques of using breath work as an avenue, as a conveyance for getting down deep into this wounded part of our soul that needs to be retrieved, what's traditionally called a soul retrieval. 
in order to bring that that innocent childlike aspect of us that we tucked away a long, long time ago for safekeeping to bring it forward because we are now ready as consenting adults, as healing adults, so that we can be whole again, so that our spontaneous, fun-loving child can come out and play again with us. Oh, that's wonderful. The word shamanic is in the title of your presentation. And what's important about shamanic techniques that you're going to share with us? Well, the importance of the shamanic approach to me is that what we are doing is utilizing and rediscovering what we already have, what we already have within us. All of us are shamans. All of us have shamanic abilities, but we've given that away as a domesticated species. And we've had specialists, we've had specialist practitioners who've taken care of us in all different ways. And now's the time. Now's the time in our lives. And I think it's the time in the in life of our species to reclaim these innate abilities, these innate powers to be whole again, to re-experience what it is to be fully human. And part of that is having this shamanic presence be alive and well within us. So someone taking this aspect of our series, the Taming the Dragon, how is it going to apply to their everyday life? What are they going to bring from this section that you teach that will be applicable to them immediately in their life? When we are traumatized, uh, especially as children, we learn survival mechanisms to get us through our childhood. And when we grow out of childhood and we may no longer need that, we're feeling safe now. We are self-empowered. We know where to go to get help. But still we have these patterns, these behavioral patterns and relational patterns that stick with us. And we're unconsciously limiting ourselves in terms of our full potential. And when we are able to become the shaman we are, when we're able to bring forth these capacities, these energies, these proclivities that we have, our wounded child can trust us as an adult to take our wounded child by the hand and come forward and be that fully engaged and fully present person again, so that we can be our spontaneous, engaged, creative selves. That is the beauty of becoming our shamanic presence, re-becoming our shamanic presence. Oh, that's very enticing. Is there one final anecdote on your own journey that you'd like to leave us with? There's, there's one approach that has really been beneficial for me, and I've watched others be so enriched by it as well. And that is to engage in our deep healing first and foremost. And the reason for that is that when we focus on the issues at hand, and there are a lot of them, and they're very serious issues, there's global warming. We've got displacement of people all around the world. There are all kinds of, of very serious issues that need to be dealt with. However, when we approach them politically, when we approach them with money, we are affecting something, but it's just touching the surface. We're just taking care of the, of the surface wound, you might say. There's something deeper going on. There's something more fundamental that is causing this woundedness this, this woundedness in our mother planet, this woundedness within each of us. And if we can engage in our personal healing process and become of one breath again, one breath and one life and function as organs within a greater organism, all coming from an empathetic place and taking care of each other, all our other problems are going to take care of themselves because the problem begins and ends within us. Mm. Thank you. What a blessing. I look forward to learning and growing with the wisdom that you have brought. And thank you so much for sharing it with us, Danmark. Oh, thank you, Jim. It's been my pleasure. And I look forward to our sharing in the workshop. Mm -hmm.